Uh, most of you know who I am. My name's Paul, and I'm the director of this uh, fine library system in the great city of Brockton. And it is my privilege and honor on behalf of the library trustees, Jocelyn Meek, chair, on behalf of the Library Foundation, Gary King, president, and on behalf of the staff, SEIU 888 President Jonathan Stroud, to welcome you all to the Thomas P. Kennedy main branch of the Brockton Public Library. Yeah. Tonight we have a fantastic kickoff for a wonderful series of events that are going to take place throughout the entire year. And at this point, I would like to turn it over to Pat Monteith, who is our, well, you do so many, so many things for us. You're, you're our grant writer, you're our makerspace advocate. Just call me a super volunteer. Super volunteer, <laughs> Pat Monteith. Pat, would you like to take it out? Push that over just a little bit more. Okay. Thank you so much, Paul. I really, uh, you know, I, I moved into Brockton just about 10 years ago, um, and one of the first places I found was this library. And it has been um, incredible for me and a lot of the students that I work with um, on their science fair projects and a lot of other special activities that I've gotten myself involved in, including this, which I didn't expect, but there's a couple of people I could mention at some point, and I might or I might not. But, one <laughs> <laughs> um, but a couple of things that I want, want to make sure, you all have a copy of our program for this evening, um, and on the back side of it, you'll see all the, the different organizations that are a part of this 10-month uh, project. And it is 10 months, and at this point, 39 different activities and events. And there's more coming. <laughs> um, and we've got an incredible partnership with the uh, school department that's going to be very, very active as we go forward with it. So if you haven't gotten a copy yet of the program for the night, please get one. The other two things that I want to bring to your attention is the uh, list of activities that are going to be happening, or most of the activities that it's going to be happening over the next 10 months. And you'll see that uh, we have it color coded. And I want to thank uh, Thomas O'Hearn from the library who's put this together, saved me a lot of time to not have to do that. So thank you, Thomas, under the great supervision of Paula um, Jones. <laughs> I almost gave you a lot, not that last name. Um, but the, um, this brochure is color coded to ha have you see the difference between events and movies and activities. So uh, take a look at it. There's an awful lot of things happening here. Um, the activities at this point are pretty confirmed, but you want to check our website, of course, the library's website and Facebook page, a special, special, special Facebook page we have just for the suffrage events. And I want to thank Jen Belcher, who's done an incredible job with the decorations. The decorations outside, aren't they incredible? Thank you, Jen. Um, the other thing that I want to, uh, the other two things quickly I want to mention is we have a book list of all the books we have uh, in the library. Well, not all of them, but most of the books we have in the library. Um, you'll see some of them over there. You can check those books out tonight if you have a library card from either the Brockton Public Library or OCLN, the Old Colony Network Library. If you'd like to check them out, you can do that uh, this evening. But the uh, book list is broken down into um, children and youth and ad adults. So we have uh, dozens and dozens of books that have to do with the suffrage movement. Um, and the only other thing I want to bring to your attention um, is, why did that happen? <laughs> uh, is uh, after the presentations this evening, in the back hall there, we have, you can um, make it your own button if you'd like to, a women uh, vote button and men vote button, and I can't remember what else is back there. Uh, we also have uh, coloring pages, suffrage color coloring pages for children. You can take them home with you. Um, and then if there's, I'm not going to ask if everybody's registered to vote, 
Um, but if you happen to not be registered to vote, we do have a voter registration table back there for you, too. Um, and if you want information about that, you can go back there and we can uh, answer your questions about that, too. This is an extraordinarily important year for us through the census to you know, get involved in the census and uh, make sure that everybody's counted. Uh, because if that doesn't happen, then it has some financial ramifications for this city. So it's very, very important that you do um, sign up and make sure that you're registered to vote, that you're counted in the census, and that you do take the uh, initiative to vote. Um, so without further ado, I think I'm going to call up our MC. We're going to have a little bit of a change in the schedule. I see our mayor just showed up. Um, mayor Sullivan, how are you? Um, and uh, we have some incredible dignitaries who are in the house right now, and I'm so honored to have them. But uh, I'd like to introduce the, uh, our MC for the evening, uh, Mr. Willie Wilson, Jr., who's... Uh, I think most of you know him. He is the historian for Brockton. Good evening. Um, it's my pleasure to serve as MC for this uh, fantastic event that we have here this evening. And uh, the very spot where we're sitting, some are standing, actually was one of the sites of the old Brockton High School, which was established in 1864. But uh, before the uh, building was built on High Street in 1906, uh, the high school was located here uh, from 1885 to 1906 when the new building opened. And uh, so this, this very spot has a lot to say about education and uh, as Pat said we are very 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 excited with all of the activities that we have planned 39 events and counting and uh, and I'm so pleased to say that we have uh, Gregory, Gregory Hazelwood who is a teacher of African American history at the high school he's involved and uh, and his students are involved we have uh, a program on the black suffragettes so uh, they're doing research and activities and uh, getting prepared and uh, I'm just uh, I'm very excited and uh, this this first it's 10 months but uh, we uh, we're uncovering new things new statements so I want to uh, call your attention to the table in the back in terms of some of the wonderful books that the uh, the library has uh, put together and uh, during this research this time there's Blanche Ames who was very involved with the the suffragette movement but she had uh, women from Brockton uh, who were involved with her and worked with her and we're doing research on that so it's a, a lot of we're looking at letters and memoirs and so it's it's quite a vast undertaking and uh, and I think you're going to enjoy it uh, with that said I think we're going to have uh, uh, Senator Brady's going to make remarks on behalf of oh well, I'm sorry the mayor is here so yeah okay we are going with Senator Brady okay <laughs> so Senator Brady's going to make yeah yeah <laughs> No, I know you have to go. So, uh, but on on behalf of the uh, the state uh, delegation, and I have to say, we're really fortunate and blessed to have uh, the delegation that we do have at the state house. And and I'm not saying that because I I know some of them. And Claire Cronin was a former student. I'm just saying that honestly because they have done wonderful wonderful things for the city, and particularly for the schools. And uh, what I like most is. If you email them or call them, they're responsive, and I think uh, that's that's very important. So, with little further ado, Senator Brady. Thank you, and thank you again to Mr. Willie Wilson for starting this off, and and everyone who's been a part of this library. You know, this room we're sitting in is a beautiful addition to our library. As Mr. Wilson was talking about the history of the area. Our library was, this building, the initial part, was built with a Carnegie grant from Andrew Carnegie in the early 1900s. Beautiful historic building, but it was never handicap accessible. And our predecessor, my predecessor, Tom Kennedy, couldn't even get in here. He was in a wheelchair unless you carried him up the stairs. And, you know, our representative, Jerry Cassidy, who served in the city council with uh, Mayor Bob Salvin and myself, worked for Representative Cassidy. And we all lobbied the legislature on a governor predecessor who vetoed some funding for a downtown library expansion uh, through the efforts of our Senator Tom Kennedy and a lot of members of this library and community 
lobbied the legislature to override the former governor's veto, and we're able to add this beautiful addition onto the library with this great room here, and it is handicap accessible, so a child or anybody who's handicapped can get into the building and use the upstairs, and it is a beautiful building, and we're so grateful to have it here in our downtown, and grateful that it's named after Tommy Kennedy, because what, without his efforts, this wouldn't be put here, this addition, but uh, Representative Cassidy led the charge to get this, this named after Tommy Kenny. so I want to give him a round of applause as well. <laughs> and, and as is mentioned, we work in a team in Massachusetts, and I know we have a new City Council, Rita Mendez, in the audience. Thank you for coming. And, and our former Mayor, Linda Balzotti, who served with me on the Council, served as our Mayor. Let's give her a round of applause. And, I, and they're both, both going to be following me, and Mayor Sullivan, who's doing a fantastic job as well. And as, as you know, no one does it alone, and we have a great team in the city of Brockton. That's why we're the city of champions, us working together, but also our residents, which is the most important thing. And as I get into this, the, the other most important thing is about voting and how important the vote counts. And people think in their lives that, oh, my vote's gonna, not going to count. Why does it matter? Well, we've had a lot of local elections that have been decided by a few votes. We had a gentleman with a famous name of Mr. Hancock, who lived in the district that I grew up with, and Bob Sullivan did in Ward 2, and he lost by three votes in a school committee race. And people think, oh, my vote's not going to count. He had people celebrating, God bless his soul, because he's passed on. He was a great friend to all of us, great advocate on behalf of our schools in Brockton. We grew up with the families, and he had people that didn't get down to vote, and you talk about how important the vote is. And then uh, several years later, when we had a state reps race, there was three Democratic candidates in a primary. It was like three cousins running against each other, and that vote was very close as well. So it proves every vote counts, and in, as was mentioned by Mr. Wilson and beforehand, this census that's coming up this year, it is so important that we get the word out. I know we're preaching to the choir here tonight, but we got to get the word out to the rest of the residents and not be fooled by the ICE or any of those immigration uh, people out there because this is so important that we get our numbers up in Brockton in the, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We lost a congressional seat with Brian Donnelly who had his office in downtown Brockton because our numbers went down and years later we lost another congressional seat in the western part of the state of Massachusetts. So it's so important to fill out these census and get the words out and they count everybody, homeless people, etc. And then as I mentioned, the vote is so important because these local elections or, or bigger elections can be decided by just a few votes and we have a major presidential election coming up this year. We have state elections, and I am grateful for all the support I've had from a lot of the community here and all of us elected officials there. So if you can get the word out, whatever, it's a right to support whoever you want. It's private. You go in a booth. But it's so important for us to get the vote out, and, and it's proven in some of our past elections. And that, as well as the census, means more federal dollars to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and more state revenue. And we, we were able to get some more fun money for our schools in Brockton with the work of our state delegation and our mayor's advocacy and all the local officials' advocacy. But they count how many people are voting, and they're going to pay attention, whether it be at the state level or the federal level. And if our numbers aren't out there, they're not going to bother paying attention. So it is so important to vote. And thank God we also have the right of women to vote, because I, I wouldn't be here without a lot of women's support. Now, I'll, I'll tell you another funny story. In some of my past elections, there'd be two signs on the lawn. The husband might, the, my opponent might have had the husband's vote, and I had the wife's vote. But it proves every vote counts. So thank you to everybody here who came tonight. I've got to head to Hanover. I know we have another great speakers here, but thank you to all you do. We work for you. You are our constituency. You are our bosses. Any help we can be for you, please don't let us know. And, like the local city buildings are open to the public, the state house is a people's house, and you're always welcome to come into the state house as well. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Kenny. Uh, Senator Brady. Uh, we have uh, next uh, Representative Jerry Cassidy. And uh, again, th this is a team. All of them work as a team. They work individually to serve us as constituents, but they also work as a team.
Thank you, Professor. I always get nervous talking in front of Willie because I'm probably going to get like a C minus or something like that. All kicked out of the class. Uh, before I start, I just want to let everybody know we do have registration forms here. They're in uh, Creole, um, Haitian Creole, and Cape Verdean Creole. And uh, what I what I would like everybody to do is just look at their neighbor, go go in the neighborhood, and just knock on the door. It's a good way to introduce yourself to your neighbor. And these are voter registration forms. Um, February 5th is the deadline to register to vote for the March uh, third, third presidential primary. So I'm just going to leave these here for a second. Um, let's see, I need glasses, my goodness gracious. It's, it's great to be here. The, uh, um, the uh, 19th Amendment, August uh, 18th, 1920, was a uh, very historic uh, uh, moment here, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the whole country. Um, the, uh, the first thing about Brockton, I'm just going to basically gear towards Brockton. Claire Cronin, she's the chairwoman of our judiciary. Uh, she's from Brockton, uh, lives in Easton at the moment. That was uh, the number one thing that happened uh, in, in Brockton uh, recently. And uh, she's done some great job with the uh, uh, judicial reform. Um, Linda Belzotti, our uh, very own here in uh, Brockton. Thank you very much for, for being here. Uh, the other, other lady that uh, I have the highest esteem for is Anna Buckley. Senator Anna Buckley was uh, the first woman uh, city councilor here in the city, became the uh, uh, senator, first senator in the uh, city of Brockton. And she also was very instrumental. She was the vice chairman of uh, uh, Ways and Means on the Senate. And if it wasn't for her, Massasoit would not be here. She was the one who got the, uh, got the funding for, uh, for Brockton. The other lady back in uh, January 3rd, 1923, was the first woman that uh, was uh, elected here in uh, the city of Brockton, which was uh, Sylvia Donaldson, uh, who actually holds, held my seat, the 9th Plymouth District. And she became uh, Speaker of the House in Massachusetts for, for a couple days there, uh, which was uh, unbelievable. Uh, the uh, number of voters here in the city of Brockton, 54,833. And out of those, there's 52% are women voters. So I just want to thank, uh, thank everybody, uh, the, the, the movement, and uh, it's just uh, wonderful to be here. I just want to run by just a couple numbers. When I started at the State House, uh, 1987, there were 30 women and House members. There were six senators. In the U.S. Senate, there, was, uh, uh, only, there, there wasn't any, uh, any women whatsoever in the, the Congress. So back in uh, 2020, we now have 46 women that are in the House, uh, House of Representatives, and uh, 12, uh, 12 women. In constitutional offices, there's four, four women and there's two men. So I just want to thank everybody very much for being here. We have some great speakers. Thank you. And I hope I got a B, bully. <laughs> uh, there is uh, one point I'd like to mention. Uh, uh, I know I teach ESOL students, the CNA for the uh, uh, adult Learning Center here in Brockton. And as I explained to my students, the census, which was established in 1790, requires by the Constitution that it take place every 10 years. And the census includes non-citizens. So by law, the count, it's everybody. So I have to explain to my ESOL students that uh, you count. You know, and so, you know, even though whether you're documented or undocumented, green card or permanent resident, you know, the census is critical. And, uh, and for many years, we're a city of 100,000, but we always come underneath because people are fearful, uh, they're confused, and as a result, they don't want to get involved. So again, please encourage your neighbors and friends, you know, that this is important. This is the census of 2020. And uh, we want to make a better Brockton, and we can do that by all citizens and residents getting involved. Thank you. And with that, we'd like to introduce uh, Mayor Robert Sullivan of the city of Brockton. Good evening, everybody. It's great to see Linda and great to see Rita. Uh, I want to thank you for having me here today. I want to thank Pat Monteith, of course, uh, Professor Willie Wilson as well, and Paul, and everybody that comes together here at the library to, to offer these public uh, engagements. They're always educational, they're always well attended, and this is what makes Brockton Brockton. You don't have to be here tonight, but you come here to learn, to listen, to share ideas, to become family. 
Uh, I, my name is Robert Sullivan, and uh, I grew up here in the city of Brockton. My wife uh, is from Brockton. Uh, and a couple quick stories I'll tell you because it's so important. And the senator said this, that every vote count, every vote matters. Mike was very modest. When Mike said it was like three cousins running, I was one of those cousins. <laughs> and Michael won by 13 votes, and he's done a great job since then. Uh, he's gone on to the state rep and now state senator. Uh, in Boston, we just saw an election that was decided, Councilor Lodge, by one vote. One vote. Uh, on the city council, which I served 14 years as a councilor at large, we have two new councilors at large, both women. We have Tina Cardoza and Rita Mendez. That's unbelievable. <laughs> but we can't forget the city council president, Shirley Azak from Ward 7. And last week when I was in D.C., Shirley was the acting mayor of the city of Brockton. We also have our good friend Susan DeCastro, attorney DeCastro down on Ward 4. So, um, you know, the city of Brockton has really offered so much opportunity to people that take the challenge to run. But a quick story, my grandmother, my dad's mom, was from Ireland, Anne Hunt O'Sullivan. And my nana came over here, like many immigrants, to work in the factories. She was an Irish immigrant. She came here in 1929. You know, back then the signs, no Irish need apply, those were real signs, you know, and she was treated very, very poorly, but she worked in a shoe factory. Um, the proudest joy of her was to become an American citizen so that she could vote. And my grandmother never missed a local election. It didn't matter if it was a preliminary or a general election or a primary. She knew how special it was to vote. And I just want to reiterate how important the census coming up, the 2020 census. If we don't get it right this time, we got to wait 10 years. So the mayor's office uh, has a liaison, Ava, uh, that Mayor Rodriguez had hired. And of course, I kept her because it's so vitally important. So again, please, please stress how important the 2020 election is. Uh, a, a census is. 2020 election is important, too. But to you, very important. But I'll say one thing. If we don't, if we don't get it right, we're going to lose a lot of federal money here for the city of Brockton, federal money that's going to help our teachers, our firefighters, our law enforcement. So really, it's extremely important. So um, I am going to give a, a humble plug to, uh, to people that are on the ballot this year coming up. You know, we have Jerry Cassidy. You know, we need to get Jerry back in there. He's an un unbelievable state representative. He really is. And, and again, there's, there's so many people that serve the city of Brockton. Uh, and, you know, I have to go to like two other events tonight, um, but I do it because I love Brockton. And anybody that puts their name on the ballot, win or lose, you're doing it for the right reason. So, again, thank you, everybody that is here tonight. Um, I, I really am thrilled to be a speaker. I'm, I'm really, uh, really thrilled to hear about, you know, what the stories are about. It's the history. And my dad was a history teacher with Willie at Brockton High, and so history's always been very, very special. So I wish you all a happy and healthy 2020, and let's go Brockton. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to change our uh, schedule just a little bit. We, we're going to do the short, um, I think it's about three minutes, about three minutes video, a video on not for ourselves alone. And then following the video, we'll have um, uh, remarks from former Mayor Linda Balzotti and Cheryl uh, Crawford, our, MC, our, our major speaker. And then um, we'll talk a little bit about that. But I want, we want to.
but we had to wake up too. On November 2nd, 1920, for the first time in history, more than eight million American women went to the polls and exercised their right to vote in precincts all over America. Thomas Jefferson had proclaimed equality the bedrock of American government. But it had taken 144 years for women finally to achieve full citizenship in the United States. And the two women who had fought longest for women's rights, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony, had not lived long enough to cast a ballot themselves. Thank you. That, that was just a, a little uh, snippet of, of the movement. And, uh, and I want to call your attention to uh, uh, the presentation. And I, I'm glad Mayor uh, Sullivan had mentioned his grandmother, Ann Hunt Sullivan, who came here in 1929. But all of us here have grandparents and great-grandparents. So in social history, we, it's, it, a lot of people are famous in their mention, but it's the average people. So, you know, some of our ancestors were involved in the movement. They might have written letters. They were, they were participants. Or, at worst, they were just, uh, they literally witnessed the events. So now what we're going to do, we're going to shift to, uh, to have some remarks from former uh, Mayor Linda Balzardi, who was the first female mayor of the city of Brockton and also a former student. And I'm so glad that she could make it. And, uh, and she's coming now with her remarks. Thank you. Thank you all. It's nice to be here tonight. I haven't been in the library for a little while, so it's nice to be back. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wilson. You were always one of my favorites. I'm not just saying that. You really were. He was a great teacher. Um, so I am the poster child for why every vote counts. And let me explain why. Um, when I was first elected uh, as Councilor of Ward 4, I only won by eight votes. When I went to be reelected for my third term as mayor of the city of Brockton, I lost by only 55 votes. So that is why it is important that everyone goes out to vote. Because after the election, when you tell a candidate, I'm really sorry you lost and I just didn't get to the polls. It, it's not a great feeling for that particular candidate. Uh, you mean well to apologize, but um, it's just not, it, it just indicates why it is so, so important. If for some reason you think that you can't make it to the polls that day, there's always the opportunity to get an absentee ballot. But voting, is one of the most important rights that you have. And we can see what happens when folks don't go out to vote. So I would encourage all of you, I think I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but in terms of going out to vote, but it is important that you have the conversation with your children, with your cousins, with your brothers and sisters, with your neighbors who may think that their vote doesn't matter. And you can use me as a poster child, because I'm not ashamed of it, it, it is what it is. Um, but please make sure that folks understand how important it is to go out and vote. In talking in terms of um, female and women and, and politics, the one thing that I will say in terms of candidates or elections is that it's really important whoever the candidate is you support. I'm not saying support a woman because she's a woman. You find the candidate that you like and you support them. Go out and work for them. You don't have to give a lot of time. If everybody gave a little bit of time to candidates, it would make such a difference you can't even imagine. But the other thing that goes on with, is, with campaigns is that all candidates have to raise money. So you may think that your $10 donation doesn't mean much compared to somebody's $5,000 donation. But what you don't understand is that if 10 or 12 
or a hundred people gave ten dollars, that's a thousand dollars that that candidate now has. So never feel like your whatever your small contribution is. Never feel that that doesn't matter because I'm telling you, it really does matter because every dollar counts when it comes to a candidate trying to get their message out. And unfortunately, that is the way of the world. All of the things that involve campaigns cost money. So I would just ask you to find a candidate you like, that you really believe in, help them a little bit, maybe give them a small donation. Um, but even more important than that, talk to everybody and anybody you know about the importance of going out to vote. I, I'm very proud. I was born and raised here. I graduated from Brockton High. I'm very, very proud to have been the first and so far only female mayor. But I'm looking to Rita and Tina. Like, come on, girls. Somebody's going to come after me. Don't leave me out here all alone. It's wonderful to be first, but I'd like there to be more. So, um, or Susan, actually. Um, so I encourage, and I encourage women to think about running for office. You, ha you have issues that are important to you, and um, we need your voice. And we are, in many parts of the country, the majority of voters. So if we get together and go out to vote, we make our vo voices heard, we make our issues heard, and you can, we can change. We can change the direction that we're going to, but it takes the vote. So please, go out and vote and get counted in the census. As a former mayor, I can tell you that um, that is extremely crucial to a city, to its budget, to its funding, for there to be a good count in the census. So please do that, and please make sure you're counted. And uh, thank you all for your patience in listening to me and um, for the ability to come back. I haven't done this for a long time, so if I rattled on a little bit, I'm sorry. And um, thank you all. It's been a pleasure to be back, and thank you, Pat, for inviting me, and have a great night. So uh, one of the reasons why uh, we invited Linda, because uh, it's a practical demonstration of how important, how vital it is that one get out. And I know uh, sometimes uh, during uh, when we go to vote, if it's raining or it's cold, and some people say, oh, I don't, you know, and they just don't understand the, and I hope you will realize after this evening and the more than 39 events that we're planning for the 10 months, uh, the sacrifices that people before us have made, men and women, to actually get the vote, you know. And uh, for many, it was always the three Bs. It was the, uh, the Bible, the ballot, and the buck. And, uh, and people grew up, whatever ethnic group you were, the, the, the three Bs might have been, they might not have been in that order, but it was taught to them how vital it was that you participate. And unfortunately, we've got to reach a younger generation who have, uh, have given up hope that it doesn't make a difference. And we have to be the change agents uh, for that. I just would like, as a footnote, Anna Buckley, I knew Anna Buckley, uh, and we do have a building at Massasoit named after her in the auditorium. And, uh, and as, a, as the first female senator uh, uh, from Brockton, uh, her thrust was education. And, uh, and she just felt it so vital that every single Brocktonian be afforded the best education that he or she could achieve. And, uh, and Anna's daughter, Denise, we graduated from high school together. And, uh, and, and it's a legacy that lives on. And so it's so, so important. And I, and, and you, it, I think you're going to see uh, with the, the presentation, our keynote, and, uh, and, and the activities that we're planning, how important it is that everybody get involved. Uh, with that said, we do have our keynote, uh, Cheryl Crawford, the Executive Direc Director of Mass Vote. And uh, with little further ado, Cheryl.
Let's see if I can slide this up here without messing up anything. Good evening. All right, thank you for the opportunity to celebrate and share in this kickoff with you. I am truly honored and humbled to have this privilege to come before you today and especially thankful to Pat Monteith and her team for thinking of me on such a special occasion. One vote matters, absolutely. It mattered then and it matters now. So I'm Cheryl Clyburn Crawford, the executive director of a statewide organization called Mass Vote. Mass vote is rooted in this country's historical struggle for over 200 years for racial and social equality. As an organization, we are the living legend of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. We were established to promote and protect the hard-earned gains guaranteed in this historical legislation. Mass vote is a voting rights and issue advocacy organization. Our work, which is rooted in the victory of the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, continues to advance its purposes of overcoming legal barriers at the state and local levels that impede our communities that have historically been and continue to be hampered and often prevented from exercising their right to vote as guaranteed under the 15th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. The struggle to have unfettered access to the voting in equitable proportions is not new. It has been a long, rough road to obtain the access we enjoy today, but it appears from official actions we are moving backwards. One can hardly believe in 2020, 150 plus years after the 13th Amendment and 100 plus years after the 19th Amendment, control of our bodies is still in question. We cannot be silent through these complicated times. Once again, we are fighting for the same right to determine our own destinies in 2020 as we did in 1920 and again in 1965. The challenges to our rights and privileges as women have not abated. We struggle mightily to define ourselves a purpose within society. I want to lift up and illuminate the role of the black women in the historical and ongoing movement for freedom. Black women have been in the fight for freedom, justice, and equality from the beginning. Long before women or black people got the right to vote, Sojourner Truth spoke our truths. She said, ain't I a woman? To a famous poem, Born of Her, a black minister and truth teller spoke life and purpose into the cause of women long, women's rights long before it was accepted by society as a whole and when it was most often meant the life of the speaker to challenge those so-called truths that all men are created equal. Many believe the women's suffrage came about because of the black woman's struggle during slavery. The Me Too campaign started with me, my mother, my grandmother, sister, all who had no voice, no rights that any man was obliged to respect. It seems as though many, too many women are still fighting to catch up, speak out, and be heard. There have been many times in history when we have had each other's back, showing support for all women. During the Montgomery bus boycotts in 1950s and 60s, it was a white woman, Viola Leluzo, who lost her life using her car to give black people rides. We are stronger together. However, we must learn to coexist. We must transcend all the isms, schisms, and labels that would divide us as a movement solidly and firmly committed to collective growth and progress. As Oprah Winfrey said in her acceptance speech at the Golden Globes Award, a new day is on the horizon. Today, as we gather, there are a record number of women, black women, Latino women, women of color, running and winning. It is no longer enough just to be at the table. We want to set the menu. We must use our voices to influence issues that impact our lives as women. We can create opportunities to use our strong voices in a way to make legal and lasting change. Because as nurturers of society and survivors of oppression, we look at issues through a different lens. Our history forms our perspectives. What issues are being brought forth because of women? While it is critically important, our voice and views are at the table. It is not enough. We must elect and support women who share our goals and our values. 
We need and must support the right voices in office. Just because she may look like me does not mean she reflects our collective values and ideas. It is more important to elect and support leaders and representatives that share our values. There was no question in 1948, as there is no question now, whether we as women are ready and capable of making progressive and productive decisions. Women have been known from the beginning of history for ruling kingdoms and nations. We are more than capable now. Throughout the history of the world, despite our positions earned or inherited, there has always been a struggle for our voices to be heard and respected. As women, we must be included because we have always had to bear the burden of nurturing society. While men were away from the home working or fighting during wartime and peace, we have been actually homeland security. Now that we have affirmed the process that recognizes and sustains our rights to vote, what we now demand is equitable access. We demand the enforcement of the laws we passed and that protect and promote our rights as women and voters. In closing, I want to be reminded we can't afford to repeat history. We can't let anyone roll back the clock on all of our hard-fought rights. It is critical we continue our forward progress by utilizing our newly affirmed understanding our collective strength as women to bring about positive and progressive change. I urge you to join with me in declaring we will not allow anyone to overturn our hard-earned victories. You know, I read my little thing tonight because I can go on with this for on and on and on and on. That's what I do. It's my favorite topic. But I wanted to stay focused and get some points in. One vote matters. Does one vote matter? Yeah. Ask Julia Mejia, right? That's who he was referring to in the city council, right? One vote matters. That is our big thing. We're always talking to people about why don't you vote? People are like, my vote doesn't count. It does. Your vote counts. Not only does your vote count, you need to be counted, right? Like we have the census coming up. This is a huge year on every level, not only with our primary election. And folks, we do have to go out and vote in primaries, whether it's presidential or whether it's local. Primary elections in Massachusetts, a lot of our elections are won during the primary in Massachusetts. But we need to get out and vote. It is critical that every vote, and if you all know what's at hand. I don't even have to go into that part, right? <laughs> like how, how everything is going on right now. But it's, a, it's critical that we build in a collective voice, in a collective way, that we support each other. And then when we finish voting, we need to make sure that everybody is counted, right? The census is critical. And, it, and you know, it, we have everybody's attention with that one, right? Because money's involved. And we know, I'm, I'm just saying, keeping it real, that money's involved and it affects every last one of us, all of our, a lot of our institutions, families, and we need to be counted in our communities. See, back, someone mentioned it earlier that we lost a congressional seat back in the last, and then we had the count, and they said, oh, you all did a really good job with the count. Well, what, in some areas we overcounted, in the more conservative areas, and then in the communities of color less represented, we undercounted drastically. And I get it, there's a multitude of issues why people will not be counted. I mean, it's pretty, I'm gonna be honest with you. When people come to my door and knock on the door, I'm not flying opening the door, right? And so you know that if you have someone in your house that's undocumented, you're probably not gonna try to open your door. So that's why we're doing the work that we're doing now to go into communities, not drop into communities and say, hey, it's time to be counted. We're doing the work on the ground right now to, to get homegrown folk, people that live in that community to be educated, to be, to whip for us, as we say in the, in, in the state house, right? Like you need a whip. We need whips in our community. We need whips on our blocks, right? People that are going out and making sure that people are counted. Because after we do the count, then it's redistricting. See, we're talking about the next five to eight years and the census counts for 10 of them. And whatever number we come up with, with the census, it is, that is the money and the services and everything that's provided for us for the next 10 years. The decennial census, when we go to look at statistics, they go back 10 years. We don't have current ones. We have our cities and 
accounts and all that, but not our decennial. And that's what the numbers are based upon. So I can't stress enough that one, does one vote matter? Absolutely. Every day, all day long. People are not apathetic. We just have to help them understand what's at stake. With that being said, I want you to let us never forget to use our collective voices and remember, we are stronger together. Uh, thank you, Cheryl, for that timely and uh, passion-filled uh, presentation. And uh, I just want to remind people that uh, I mentioned earlier in terms of giving somebody a ride, encouraging people, even uh, my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, uh, who passed away at 99, and she voted right up until age 98 and, uh, and always wanted me because I was so passionate about voting and she always wanted me to drive her not my father you know and um, and and she just felt uh, she came to Brockton in the uh, in the 1950s but she grew up in South Carolina and uh, and and she just felt it such a privilege to be involved and, uh, and 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 yet and she understood the importance I do want to remind you that the presidential primary and the uh, general election, there will be early voting at uh, Westgate Mall that we had in the past. So that's going to help facilitate that. So thank you all for coming. We really do appreciate it. Um, there are some buttons in back if you'd like to have some. There's plenty of desserts left. Please, t please take some home. I do, my doctor tells me I can't take that home. So it's going to be up to you to do it. <laughs> And again, thank you so much to the team that we've been working with. Amina just left, but Willie's been a major part of this. And uh, Paula, who's, this is Paula's last day at the library. She deserves a big round of applause. Um, Jen is phenomenal. As I said, she put together that whole display out there. Um. <laughs> And Sue, yeah, Sue helped. That's right, thank you. Um, but on behalf of uh, uh, everybody who's been putting together this planning committee uh, and all the, the events that we've had, um, it's just been absolutely, oh, Catherine, you're over there. Yeah, that's right, Catherine, honey, thank you so much. Actually, Catherine is the one that got me involved in this whole thing, so. so <laughs> and Paul Engel, the director of the library, it's just, it's been an incredible crew. Um, we have at least 38 more events coming up. <laughs> Um, so you can take a copy of the brochure, um, and if there's anything we can do, our contact information is there, and we are going to be adding a couple of more events. We have a couple, I'm really thrilled that we have a couple um, over at the high school. The high school called me last Friday, yes, last Friday, to do a, a, a panel discussion on black suffragists in three weeks. Um, and it's like three weeks, really? <laughs> but you want to know something? I'm so thrilled that we're able to help make that happen. And we are going to be making that happen. But it's, you know, the support of all of you. Hope to see you at future events. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.